Hey, how's it going everyone? Today we're going to talk about the Cannular Pro Semi-Auto Benchtop Can Seamer. Bit of a mouthful, but we will talk about what comes in the box, what doesn't, the setup, use, maybe a quick comparison to other canners, where to get cans, and finally we'll go over some pros and cons. Go! So what does it do and how does it work? A canner basically just seals the can end to the body. The can and lid are pressed up against a chuck that spins the can and holds it steady while the two-stage process creates a double seam. The first stage just kind of rolls or folds the lid around the flared edge of the can. The next stage then tightens them together which forms a double seam which is made up of five layers that is leak proof and strong. A can can hold up to about 90 psi and a beer bottle about half that. The lid will expand out to show you impending can failure long before it explodes, unlike a beer bottle which can be a little more surprisey. For the Canula Pro, the can and lid are placed on the mount the handle is turned to manually put the can up against the chuck, then the button is pressed to start the process. The motor starts up to spin the can and a cam system is used to actuate the rollers at the right time for the double seaming process. This leaves you with a double seamed can ready to go. And here's what's included in the box for the not so low price of $699 USD. You get the Yugong Tools 14mm wrench, an Allen key, which you probably have tons of from Ikea furniture, the turntable the turntable lever, and the cannula itself. So the included items are enough to get the cannula adjusted and ready to go, just not to can. You're gonna need a power supply for that, and the power supply is gonna run you about $110 US. So the power supply is all you really need to get it up and running, but what you may also want is the splash guard. Splash guard goes on easily, and it makes it a lot less messy when you're canning. Normally when you're canning, you're capping on foam, beer's gone down the side of the cans, the canner spins it, so it's just gonna send beer everywhere. You might as well have a splash guard there. The problem is it does set you back another 60 bucks, bringing you up to about 170 bucks for accessories if you buy them separately. But you can also buy, when you buy it initially, buy a $850 package, at least in more beer, that has the cannula, the splash guard, the power supply, and it also throws in a crowler chuck if you ever plan on doing it that way. If you're anything like me, when you get this, you're immediately gonna wanna open it up, plug it in, and test it out. I wouldn't recommend that. This thing has been shipped from China, some of the adjustments could be out and the instruction manual mentions you should at least check that the rollers aren't contacting the chuck, which could ruin it and make a bad seam forever, until replaced. So that being said, when you get this, the first thing you want to do is take the cover off to examine the insides. Here you'll be looking at the chuck, the rollers, and the flywheel, or the gears. I may have the terminology a bit off. Keep it unplugged and manually turn the flywheel to ensure the gears mesh nicely and more importantly that both rollers don't contact the chuck. I don't expect this to happen, but if it does, you'll have to make adjustments to the positioning of the rollers. How to do this is clearly described in the user manual, which you'll have to get online, and I'll link a video in the description below that shows you how to adjust the rollers and check the tolerances. Setting the can height is pretty straightforward. Before shipping, they tested it with the 16.9 ounce can or a 500 milliliter can just to make sure it was correct. So if you bought the 500 milliliter cans, it should already be set up for you but you'll want to check it anyway. If the can seats into the chuck and it's a little bit tight but doesn't buckle, you should be good to go. Yeah. Oh. If not, you'll need to use the Allen key to loosen the coupling nut on the turntable support and spin that around to adjust the height of your turntable. With the turntable lever fully up and to the left, use your free hand to adjust the turntable support until the can fits snugly on the chuck. Now you're ready to can. Here's what I do for canning. There may be better ways, but this has worked for me so far. First I keep the cans in the container they were shipped in until use. Then I rinse the cans with hot water and hopefully clear any dust or other crap that may be in there. Then I put the lids in a bath of sanitizer until I'm ready to use them. When it comes to filling the cans, ideally I would always use a beer gun, making sure to purge oxygen with CO2 before filling them, but for the most part I've just filled them directly from my taps and I haven't had an issue with oxidized beer yet. Just make sure to cap on foam. Now that you've put the lid on the foam, put the can on the turntable and raise the lever fully. Hold the lever in place and press the operation button. You will now have a sealed can. Yeah. If you want to get super technical about making sure you have a perfectly filled can, just take the can weight plus the specific gravity times the milliliters of the can, and that'll equal your total amount. When you plan on canning a bunch or a whole batch at the same time, it makes sense to set up some sort of production line if you're able. I like to set it up so I have the box of cans close to my sink so I can unpackage them and rinse at the same time. I put a wash bin close by that I put the rinse cans in and then slide them over by a keg that I just put on the table next to the canning machine. Then I fill the cans using a bottling wand and cap them using lids I have in the sanitizer nearby. 
if you're doing the process with one person, it makes sense to only fill about four to six cans at the same time because that foam kind of dissipates quick and then you'll end up with potential oxidation. Finally, I have another wash bin that I put the filled cans in so I can rinse at the end of the line before labeling. Tip of the day. Don't buy something on the website just because the company recommends it. I bought the 330 milliliter cans and right next to it recommended the table spacer for the cannular. I have the cannular pro. This spacer was for the cannular. Cannular Pro is adjustable, cannular is not. It needs this in order to can the smaller cans. 25 bucks down the drain. Bonus tip. The cans will hold 90 PSI, but they could fail if you are heating them up for something like pasteurizing or if you have to store them in a really warm place. If possible, store them in a cool place and you shouldn't have this issue. But if you have to store it in a warm place, you might want to put a little bit of extra headroom in there to give it a little bit more space to expand before failure. A big thing you need to look at when you're picking up a canner is where you're going to get the cans. Since the Cannula Pro has an adjustable table which allows you to use different heights of cans, all you really have to think about is the diameter of the cans, and that is 202 on these, and as well as the type of chuck it used which is a B64. As long as it's a 202 slash B64 type ends, the canner should work with any of them because you can adjust the height. Two of the easiest places you can look at when you're getting the cans is either ordering the Kegland cans through More Beer, or you could go direct through October and get the October cans. Kegland cans are the 16.9 ounce and the 330 milliliter ones, whatever that is, announces. And the October ones are the kind of more standard North American ones, which is the 16 and the 12 ounce cans. The October ones are about $77 for a case, plus shipping, which is fairly expensive. And I think it's around 50 bucks-ish. So about 125 for a case of cans. And the Kegland ones, or the cannular ones, are coming in at about 150 to 170 dollars, but that's with shipping included. The October ones are probably the cheapest way to go for that and they'll get you the more standard North American size cans. Other options would be to go to your local brewery if they have bright cans or even if they have label cans if they're willing to give them to you and try to bum some off of them but with can shortages it may be hard to do and don't tell them I sent you. So before I go into the pros and cons here's a quick comparison of the canners that are at least somewhat available for the home brewer. The two companies that are doing them are Kegland and October. Kegland has the cannular and the cannular pro like I'm reviewing in this video and October does the Benchmark, the Home Brewer SL1, and the Model 7. For the Kegland canners, the cannular is the entry level model. It uses a manual actuation for sealing the lids, and it's not really adjustable. It comes set up for the 16.9 ounce cans, but you can buy a chuck to adapt it for the 330 milliliter cans as well. And finally, for the cannular, you're still going to need to buy a splash guard and the power adapter. And with all that said and done, it comes in at about $625. And for the next one, the Cannula Pro. It's the one I'm reviewing in this video. And it's much more adjustable and it is semi-automatic. So you just press the button to seal the cans. And you can adjust up and down for can height, which opens it up for a wide variety of cans. You can buy separate chucks for it, which include the Crowler. And you can even get one for tin cans or steel cans if you're the prepper type and you like to canned food or whatnot. The separate chucks for the cannula are coming in at about 40 bucks each and as you remember you're going to need the splash guard and the power adapter as well and all said and done it comes to 850 but that does include the Crowler chuck splash guard and power adapter if you get the package. With the October canners you need to choose the type of tooling you want set up with the initial purchase. Most of them come standard with the B64Ns but if the B64Ns aren't what you want you can get them set up for the CDLE which are kind of the more European cans or the super end cans. Although it may be more expensive for setting up for the separate types of cans, having specific tooling for the cans make it a little bit easier to adjust into place and they will come ready for that type of can when you get it. There won't be any messing around with heights or anything like that to get it adjustment properly. So for the least expensive of the October line comes the Benchmark canner. You can either choose the 16 or the 12 ounce cans or you can use the Kegland style ones which are the 330 or the 500 milliliter cans. The Benchmark comes with a splash guard right out of the box, so you won't have to spend extra on it. One of the things you'll have to look at with the Benchmark is that it does not have a motor, so you will have to use your own supplied power drill to turn the chuck. One thing that's nice about the October is that once you lock the can up in place against the chuck, it stays there, and you won't need to use one hand to hold it into place there. But, like I said, you need to use a drill, so one hand will have to be on the drill, and one hand will have to be on the manual handle to seal the can. And finally, the Benchmark comes in at about 500 bucks, and it's definitely the most inexpensive way to get into canning for the home brewer. The next canner is October's Homebrew SL1. It uses the same kind of mechanism as the plain cannular, 
or the benchmark where it's a manual handle to seal the can, but it does have a nice locking mechanism when you push the can up into the chuck. Problem with this one is that it doesn't come with a splash guard and that's gonna run you about 160 bucks. The sl one's compatible with a lot of the tooling for their higher end model and you should be able to use most type of cans on it if you have the correct tooling. The big thing about the SL1 is that with a splash guard, it's gonna come in at about $1,040 plus whatever taxes you have. So it is a little bit more expensive than the Cannular Pro. And finally, if you wanna get a little bit crazy, the October Model 7 is their commercial version of the canner. It's the canner that you see at a lot of pubs or neighborhood breweries and it comes right out of the box, ready to can whatever type tooling you have it set up for. The problem with that is that if you wanna do other types of cans, it's gonna cost you about $680 for the extra tooling to set up for those cans. The Model 7 does come ready to go, the splash guard is already incorporated, and it can be used for any of the other types of cans that the cannular or the other versions of October work with. So while this one's potentially the most solidly built and has the most options for different types of can you can use, it's by far the most expensive. It's coming in at over double the price at $2,580, and that cost only includes the tooling for one type of can. If you want to do two or three different types of cans, you could easily get into $3,000 plus dollars. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons. For the first pro, it's a decent price for a semi-automatic canner. Comes in a little cheaper than any of the October versions, except for the Benchmark, which basically you need to use a drill as the motor, so that one doesn't even have the motor, and it's not a heck of a lot cheaper. It still is a little cheaper, but not a heck of a lot. Uh, it's a great solid piece of kit, and it should last for hopefully a long time. It says adjust the chucks after 50,000 cans. Seems a little crazy, but whatever. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. 50,000 cans a lot, probably 50 years worth of canning. And for the second pro, it's adjustable. A lot of the different canners are interchangeable for the parts like the chucks, but this one's actually adjustable. You can change the chuck on this, but the rollers you can actually adjust in and out, which make it a lot easier to use your different diameter cans, as well as the table height up and down. The other canners make you buy separate accessories or parts because it's kind of fixed in place without the fine adjustments there. And for the third pro, it's semi-automatic. It's one of the only ones in the market that you just press a button and it will seal the can. All you really gotta do is move the turntable up and down to do the cans. It should be a lot less fatigue and easy to use overall. For the first con, it's a bit messy. The splash guard here, when you lift it up, it'll dump beer down onto the machine and possibly get into the buttons and through the creases there. So you wanna take it apart once in a while just to make sure everything's uh, clean. And for the second con, it does not come complete. Splash guard's pretty much necessary. You wanna get the plug, so unless you're buying the kit, you need to buy the pieces separately and it just costs a little bit more money. One reason they possibly do this is because there's different areas using it and they don't use the same power supply, but either way, it kind of tricks you into thinking it's a little cheaper than it is when you see the original price of uh, $6.99. And for the third con, it might require a little bit of technical skill out of the box. As you can see in the description and the instructions, it mentions that you need to possibly adjust the chucks. If you have to get into chucks, then you will need a feeler gauge and just some fine tune adjustments to make sure the can seals properly. And if it's not sealing properly, you might even have to take a grinder and open up the can to see what the seal's actually looking like so you know how to fix it. But either way, it might require a little bit of technical skill. There are great videos and it is well described in the instruction manual, but just keep that in mind before you're buying it. From what I've heard, the Octobers come pretty much perfect and ready to go, but they are a little bit more expensive. So I guess we're down to the final words on this thing and I guess, Obviously canning isn't for everyone. For me, it's just another one of those brewing purchases and I like to kind of justify it with the fact that in my head I'm gonna open a brewery someday so this is a definitely justified purchase that will come in handy business-wise and I'll be able to write it off. But that's not potentially the case. It's your hobby. If you want a can, you need to get a canner and they are fun to use. It's kind of cool giving out your cans to other people and it's no more expensive than a jet ski or boat. Overall, I've used it for about 500 cans so far and I haven't had too many fail, even when about two thirds of that was using the improper chuck and sealing the cans like you weren't supposed to. With that, I only had maybe one fail in about 30. With the proper table, I haven't had any fail yet. So take that for what it is. If you use it right, it'll work better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click that like button. If you wanna see more, subscribe and check this video out if you're bored.